So here I am again, and I'm going to show you how to scan an image directly into the machine. This is your scanning mat. It has this nice little vellum sheet under it, and I just slipped um, a copy from my copy machine from that I made for my copy machine into between this and this is where you can put copies of my um, custom made templates that I sell on my Etsy site and my website that are made just to work with the shrink plastic because they have nice wide margins so you're going to have lots of success really close close items are easily caught up so it's worth it to me to add margins and ways to little shrink plastic this way and save my bead shapes versus putting them close together and losing bead shapes one and therefore wasting shrink plastic so we've got this ready to go the machine is on we're going to click the home button we're going to click the carriage button so it moves into position we are not um, going we're going to cancel anything in our previous memory because we're going to a new scan, a new image. So we're going to click scan. And we're going to click direct cut because, I mean, uh, scan to data because we just want to save this in the machine. We're not putting this, if we were directly cutting, it would be on the cutting mat and it, we would be cutting exactly this out of whatever, you know, any kind of paper we had. So I'm going to say scan to data and um, I'm going to tell it to start and it'll say the mat is not loaded. So we're going to load the mat and I don't know what it is about the machine. The mat's really easy to load for the scanner and not as easy to load for my um for the cutting mat, and it could be because, you know, be careful with your cutting mat, mat. You know, I've used mine, so sometimes I struggle with that mat because I forced it when it was brand new. So I'm going to try to get that glare, some of that glare off of there. So we're going to click Start, and it's got a lever on the side over here that's either in a one down or up in a two, and I've got that in the two, but it's prompting to make sure I know that. We're gonna go start. And the first thing it is doing is the message m machine is just recognizing our image. It hasn't saved it as a file or anything. It's just saying, okay, I see this. Now, what would you like me to do with it? So right here's my options to do things with it. This button here is, if I push that, push that, it's just going to go around the outline, the perimeter of these shapes, and it'll save that in a file so that I just have these shapes. If I press this button, it'll sh save these shapes and my interior shapes, so I can cut the entire thing. If I click this button here, um, I've not played with that one, but that one is if I've got a, um, a, a color image and multiple stuff in there, more complex. So um, I, I'm gonna go for this one right here. And I'm going to tell it, okay. And right now it's processing. And, and then it's going to ask me, where would you like that saved? To a USB plugged in here? Or do you want me to send it to the Canvas workspace on my computer? Or do you want to save it directly to the machine? I'm going to save it directly to the machine. Okay, it named it a file. Okay. So that's all right. I'm going to tell it it's okay. And now I could save it in these other options that I described about, but I don't want to do that. I'm happy with just this saved model. So um, I'm going to click the home button because I'm done. And it's going to ask me if I want to delete what those options. It's not deleting that file. That file is saved. It's deleting mm, the editing and, and choices. So I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to click this button here, which is supposed to help me. I can lift that, get the um, 
the scanner out of there. I mean the sheet out of there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is cut, and I'm doing um, regular shiny and sanded, sanded space done. I've put a lot of tape on there. Um, I'm going to have a little wrestle here with the machine while it um, to load the mat because I do have a damaged mat. So if your mat is damaged, you can watch me, you know, do this if you get some dents in it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I lift this up. And then I'm going to snap that down again. And I'm going to retrieve that pattern I just scanned in. And um, I'm going to go down here. And there it is right there. So it's pulling it up. And I'm going to say, okay. And it all looks like it's good. I don't need to add anything. Okay, again. Now. It's going to ask me to select what I want to do with that. I want to cut. So I'm going to click cut. This comes up often. This thing, it, it almost everything I put into this, it tells me something's out, some pattern is out of the range. If the patterns are all dark, which they were, that usually isn't the case. The thing is that this comes up because I make my templates a bit smaller than my shrink plastic. So that when the machine sees them, it thinks that the shrink plastic is also that smaller size and it isn't. So because my shrink plastic is bigger than that, just to save things not being right up to the edge, like I talked about nice wide margins, I'm usually okay. If a pattern is really light, that means it probably won't cut. But watch this, it will cut. But I may be wrong. See how they're all dark? So it's next, it, it will prompt me to load this mat. And it can be a little temperamental, so. There, got it in. I, I, I either try to snap it here or get it a nice grip. Now I've got a nice green button and it's telling me to go, but I want to talk about pressure. So there I am at my pressure and I'm going to click my toolbar now. I'm going to keep it at an 8 or a 9. I will tell you that my blade is getting a little dull when I've done this demo. So I m might consider going up to a 9, but... Once, if I have to go up to nine, I really should be replacing my blade. So I'm going to see if I can get one nice cut, more a couple more cuts out of this. Um, I've cut about, um, let's see, 50 sheets on, 50, 60 sheets on one blade. That's a lot of cutting for shrink plastic. So I'm going to click it at eight, but just once again, I think I showed this in the last one. You know, we have the auto setting that automatically tells us, the machine says, I think there's something the size of shrink plastic in there. But I'm having more success when I've manually set it to eight. Nine is the highest it goes. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to start. And it says it's going to be three minutes. I'll come back when that's done. I'm just going to watch it. Well, I'll let you watch it just a little bit. You watched it before um, with the gold. I think it was the gold. And I can tell when I hear it cut that the blade's still okay. If I hear some scratchy sounds. I know the blade is kind of dull. So I, I think I'm good with it. A little tip I want to say, I don't remember if I did this in the last time too, is if it senses that it's not cutting the, all the way through because the blade's a little dull, it'll go over it twice. If your blade's so dull that it's going over three times, that's too much because you'll get halos on it. Don't push your blade that part far. It's it's not worth it. It's not worth the frustration. So this will probably go pass through it two times. So I'm done cutting, and I'm gonna click OK and lift this up, release that button, and pull it out, and then. Pull my tape off 
And see, as I said, there's plenty of room on it. Um, and that's because um, my drawings are made a little tinier, a little smaller than my shrink plastic, so I'm not right up to the edge. And, and, and I've learned, as I said, whoa, that it's better to not have these so tight and then lose beads and get frustrated when they break than um, have um, more margin waste. Because I can hand cut leaf shapes in this margin waste. You know, the, I brought a nice little um, dagger bead template to save for those kind of things. And as I said, Brother has a nice little paddle that helps you get these out. And um, that's the first thing I did. I loved it, so I immediately used it and then lost it. Same thing I did with my $100 Apple Pencil. I liked it so much that I didn't put it in a safe spot. So... Sometimes you might, this is, I want to, I want to show you something here. See this little second margin? This is also a sign that to me that, um, that's, that I can get that off, but that's a sign that the blade might be getting a little bit dull. Just, it's not as crisp, and so when it has to go around a second time, it just will cut this um, halo. So like, that's why I said a third times, you don't want that to happen. But there we got all of our nice little shapes and um, that was pretty easy. So yeah, that's why there's margins on here um, because then we end up with um, great beads. So that's my demo on scanning in images. Thanks a lot.